you've got the woman who has heard a lot of I'm sorry, and if she's heard a lot of I'll do better and I won't do this anymore. Mm-hmm. And this con- but the habit has certainly not changed. He's mm-hmm. only hidden it more or denied it to himself and to his wife or both. Um, yeah. And in the end, uh, the pit's only gotten deeper, the deception's only gotten stronger, and uh, he is just become more and more determined to figure out how can he separate these two areas of his life. Mm-hmm. I've got my wife and my kids and my family on one end of my life, and that is all going fine according to my definition of fine, and then I've got this dark secret world, and I maybe, maybe I don't even like it, but I like it enough that I'm going to stay there because it's where I feel safe and secure and this this thing. And I can separate these two things out. I can have a good marriage, good family, and a good life over here. And I can look at porn over here. And they don't have to get, the wires don't have to get crossed. He's not demonstrated any change, any habit change in his life. Is in this situation, is the conversation even about trusting him anymore? Or is it just about... <laughs> Is it just about something else entirely? Yeah. You know what? I um, that, That's that's probably one of the most heartbreaking scenarios for me. And I it's all the time. I've had women in, in my online support groups that I lead who have described exactly what you're talking about. We've been married 20 years. It's a continuous pattern of this behavior. Um there, I wish there were easy answers. You know, <laughs> you know how that goes. Oh, yeah. I wish I could say, here's what you do. Um, I think there's a time and a place to set some very specific boundaries with a husband. Yeah, let's talk and about to that. Say, to, to say, you know what, um, here's the evidence that I'm looking for. And, and you can hide this. But it, you know what a woman often knows? And we, we talk about how, um, it, when I'm talking to groups of women, we talk about not um, being the porn police, not digging for stuff all the time, but at the same time, not walking around naive and wearing blinders when we see evidence. And you know what, as much as a husband thinks he can keep those two camps separated as you <laughs> described and ne'er the two shall meet, um, you know, there's always gonna be ramifications. Yeah. And, and she can see that. I mean, it changes your relationship, whether you wanna think that it does or doesn't. Mm. I mean, it, it affects intimacy, it affects how you communicate, it affects how you, you know, demonstrate respect to one another. What, things that your children may be exposed to because of what you're, the choices that you're making. I mean, there's just so much that goes there. So, I mean, I think sometimes a woman has to set very specific boundaries and, and that might be that you have to have filters on and you have to, you know, have a support group and you, you know, we need to be spending this time together. I need you to come to bed at the same time that we go to bed or, or whatever. I mean, in fact, in my book, I give a list of a lot of different options, but, um, you have to have a consequence for that. And whether that means, you know what, for a time we need to live on different floors of the house, you know, until we can get to a place where emotionally and um, and spiritually we are in a healthy place again. I don't think physical, um, you know, sexual intimacy can occur until you have actual intimacy with one another. And I don't think that can happen when one of you is engaging in that level of sin. Uh, talk a little bit more about this issue of boundaries. Yeah. Uh, this is something that uh, we run into quite a bit, um, where you have one, two women in different marriages, different scenarios. And they say very similar things, but you can you can sense a, a totally different spirit about it. Uh, on one hand, you've got a woman who says, "Okay, my husband's been looking at porn. I'm telling him not to look at porn. I'm telling him how much it hurts me. I'm not feeling. You know, I, this is this is a." feels like a terrible situation we've been in. We've gone round and round and round on the, on the treadmill for a long, long time on this. I put the boundary down and I said, you know, we're going to sleep on separate floors and this and that, you know, whatever it is. She puts uh-huh. the boundary down. She says, look, I, I, I feel I've sc- I'm scared for the well-being of my children. You're, you're leaving porn out in the open for them to be exposed to. And I'm worried about this. And so I need to do something to protect them. I need to put some kind of separation in here. I need to do something. There's that woman. And then there's the woman who is saying very similar things, but the spirit about it is just, is he did this to me. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to do this to him. Mm-hmm. And, and th- those are, they're very different, very different kind of, uh, um, scenarios there. Yeah. So t- talk about that. What's the difference here between, you know, setting a boundary and a carrying know, a porn stick. 
Yes. <laughs> Yes, yeah. exactly. I mean, any woman, no matter where her husband is on the spectrum, has runs the risk of carrying around this porn stick that I'm going to bring this up and I'm going to use this against you every time you do something wrong or I suspect you might be doing something wrong, whether I have any evidence of that or not. That's a really that that's sinful in your own respect. I mean, that's just not how we are to treat and love one another. Having said that. <laughs> You do have to set boundaries and yep. there are healthy there are healthy boundaries to set for the sanctity of your marriage and those need to be set. You don't have coarse language, you don't, you know, go to bed with unresolved conflict. You um, you know, you do keep the marriage bed pure. When um, you know, I I just can't even tell you how many women I hear whose husbands are trying to bring what they've seen, you know, on screen to their bedroom and devastating those for women. You you don't do things like that. Um, you don't to be a tally keeper and keep record of each other's right and wrongs. I mean, so you set some specific boundaries like that. Um, and and there's some healing things, again, that you can you can put in place when if you are both working on this and you can say, this is what I need. I think a woman needs to be able to express to her husband. This is what I need from you, not just a list of what I don't want you doing. I, you know, that that's one thing. But these are the things I need to rebuild our relationship. I need time with you. I need touch from you that's not sexual touch. I need, um, you know, just I need to hear how you feel about me. I need you reporting to me, not consistently, because I don't encourage women to be their husband's accountability partner. But I want to hear how you're doing now and then on this. And I don't just want the bad reports. I want to hear about how you're doing in a healthy way. Um, Women have to be very, very careful because this is where, again, we shine the light into a dark situation. It casts shadows. One of those things hiding in the shadow can be our tendency to be punitive and to treat our husbands like children as opposed to like grown men. And and it's not our job to, to be their mothers. It's not our job to be the pouring police. It's not our job to be the one who's going to convict them of this sin. We We don't have that kind of right or responsibility or power um nobody has appointed us the judge who gets to convict people of their sins 